Alrighty guys, welcome back to the Combustion Gamer YouTube channel. If you're watching this video, it's going to be over on TCG Studios. Uh, that whatever, I might rebrand that to some extent, but that's where it's going to be for right now. Anyways, we're doing some retro gaming. So we are going back 20 years in time, and we are going to be playing SeaWorld Adventure Park Tycoon. One of my favorite games to play actually so we are back gonna be playing it checking it out and uh, let's see what we got going on we don't have any saved games right now so let's get into what we can do so uh, it's pretty easy you got the campaign where you have uh, beginner the beginners the beginner sections the medium the great expansion and also the keep them happy experts and all of that stuff so you got all of that right there so a lot of different stuff to do and you have all of the different um, yeah, you've got all the different goals that you're supposed to meet. Pretty easy, honestly. It, it ends up being pretty good. Then we can, of course, go to any one of the three parks. SeaWorld Orlando, SeaWorld San Antonio, or SeaWorld San Diego. Uh, at this point, you didn't have SeaWorld Ohio anymore, so they didn't have that in the game, quite obviously. But, yeah, you got three different parks, all pretty well. Uh, allowed with plenty of space to really build out, which makes things very, very fun. Uh, when it comes down to actually building out the park, I think my favorite is probably uh, the San Diego sandbox map, just because of uh, which way the camera is setting, because you can't move the camera around, you can't rotate, you can only look at it this way, you can't rotate the camera, which is a kind of annoying, but eh, you get it, it works, you can get stuff done, so... Anyways, but let's get into one of the missions. So this one we've already completed, so let's try running smoothly and let's see what we got. And we'll show you the uh, glitches and stuff that we have going on uh, with the game that uh, we can actually fix, luckily, which is kind of nice. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so here we are. So we got ourselves um, our mission. So this park is pretty much up and running, but the staff need to be hired and put to work. You will need to build two staff rooms, hire your me mechanics to keep things running smoothly, and cleaners to make sure the place is neat and tidy. Uh, so to hire the staff, you have to build the staff rooms first. So build two staff rooms, hire mechanics and cleaners, and get the litter count down to 10 items or less, which I can actually show you a way of fixing that as well. So here we go hit the button now you see how stuttery it is right now it is like very stuttery well this is all because of one simple thing on this game this map right up here so hit that it automatically smooths out it's all because of this map right here uh, I don't totally know why I think basically it's because of all of these dots and stuff that uh, the computer just cannot uh, render it quite well because you have all of this you have to render plus all of this you have to render it ends up being a lot that has to be rendered and I think that ends up being a problem but you can see how nice and smooth the map becomes once you uh, close out that map and really you don't need it with how the map size is plus also if you need to you can zoom out zoom in and it uh, works out really good so uh, we'll work on that uh, work on our goals here in just a second so um, I always like let me turn down my audio in my ear just a bit just a little bit loud can't really think a whole lot so uh, let's uh, look at the options that we have in game once we're on a map so we've got uh, the speeds we can speed them up to two times speed or we can do uh, three times speed three times speed seems a little bit obnoxious honestly but I mean if you want to really move time along it does help and really you can see how fast the money goes up and stuff but uh, I kind of like letting it sit at two speed that's just how I roll. So let's look at what we got right here. We've got uh, our notifications down here on the bottom. Uh, that can become very annoying. I remember very, very well. Very annoying when all of these just continuously are scrolling. It gets very annoying very fast. We have our research that we can do. So this is going to help us with pieces of scenery and also attraction improvements. So we can scroll that up to like uh, $250 daily spending we also have our conservation fund which uh, we can also increase the funding for that as well to $250 a day because hey we're SeaWorld so we've got to keep uh, working on saving the animals and stuff because hey that is what we do we've got the boats we got our trucks and we are ready to go and save an animal in need whenever uh, one thing that we don't have in this park is any animals 
so that's one thing that we can work on in future we also have a nice finance page this thing is so cool to look at and it will show up red if you're losing money so it's really cool to be able to look at that uh, let me see here so you have the money you're getting from attractions the money you're getting from retail sales uh, demolition today and then you got your total income then you also have your average daily income which will pop up once you get through some more days uh, we also have how much money we're spending on construction costs stock purchases today so that's for food and whatnot uh, wages and also scenery purchases so all of that's right in there uh, let me see here so then we also have our scenery right over here kind of a small window honestly I didn't remember it being that small but it is we got our regular path we got our grass and we also have our weeding line path that we can uh, be able to put in and then all of our uh, features that we can put right here along the path you see where my mouse is we can put different things all throughout the park scenery wise like signs and whatnot and then of course we also have flowers that we can put down uh, we have bushes and shrubs I'm not a big fan of the bushes and shrubs they honestly they've always been pretty ugly I've always hated them in this game uh, we also have ornaments so we have like a little pool we've got some sharks we can also do some nice fountains and whatnot and then we also have trees so hey if you want a palm tree We've got all kinds of palm trees, and uh, just for those that uh, love the environment, you can put down plastic palm trees. Ha <laughs> No, we're not going to do that. Those things are ugly. I don't know why that's even in this game. Plastic palm trees. Why is it in the game? I don't know. Seems very idiotic. Uh, let's see here. So what do we got going on? So right over here, we got ourselves a little dolphin store. It's doing pretty good. We need to build our mechanics, uh, but we're going to keep showing you th through the game here just in a second. Uh, of course, we have our obje objectives that we can click on. Uh, this right here, this is pretty... Da -da 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 -da. Thank you. So we got our new conservation saved a eel. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we got our main info. We got our staff, buildings, items, litter, uh, objects, etc. And then, of course, we also have the cleanliness of the park and whatnot. Uh, this all shows up on the opinion of the average guest. So that's very helpful to be able to look at. Uh, of course, we have... Don't do this because this will like really mess up your game there, as you can see how stuttery it is. But basically, that's showing you the average happiness of all the guests, which, honestly, we don't need to be looking at because... Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. And then you've got all of the buildings you can go through, and you can actually go by the repair state, the faults that it's had, the age, uh, you can look at the income just today. And there you go, you can look at just the income, which is really, really cool. Uh, you got the cost today, profit today, average profit today. It's very detailed on the profits. It's really cool how you can really see how much you're making. Uh, waiting line time, customers today. So how many customers, who's had the most customers? That's Bingo Joe's, over 200. Uh, we have the amusements, animals, drink, so there's the drinks right there uh, food so all of this is all the food options uh, you can even look at restrooms yes we make profits in restrooms and so uh, all the restaurants have restrooms in them so you have that to be able to look at uh, we got the shows don't currently have any shows going and then we can also look and see what rides and attractions are open or closed at the moment so all of that a lot of different detail to be able to look at and then of course uh, we have our basic options uh, we got our object outlines now object outlines you can see right here this only shows up when like uh, guests and stuff are like uh, behind a piece of scenery or behind a building don't really need that we also have our extra water animation that we can add so I think you're gonna see it right here journey to Atlantis turn that off just saves a little bit on what what the computer has to do and then you do right there and it's like just a little bit of water animation which works out good you got your sound and everything there is music but uh, I don't want to play it because I don't want it to uh, lose my mind too much. We can also save, restart scenario, load, and everything right there. So let's get into <clears throat> our scenario here very quickly. Uh, we're going to get, go ahead and get our little building. Now you're going to hit spacebar to be able to spin this thing around. Place that right there. We also need another one for our crew. So let's see if we can find another spot for that. I think we can put it right back there I'm gonna go into our scenery 
editor. There we go. So here we go. We got both of our things. That's and you saw that right there, and you heard that little noise. We are good to go. Now we're going to do staff control. So what we can do, we come into here, and we can actually uh, go in between and see the animal specialists, the cleaners, and all that, all that information to really see what's going on. Uh, we can also, once we have animals, we can actually see what their uh, food, care, habitat, and happiness levels are. Uh, very important when keeping those uh, taken care of. And we need mechanics. So we're going to hire four mechanics. We got John Fixit, we got Larry Mindit, we got Errol Minder, and we got Jeffrey Repair. <laughs> Love the names. And we also need some cleaners. So we got uh, Rebecca Sweep, Nona Bucket, uh, Shirley Moppet. <laughs> I never read these names before. Uh, Sonia Duster, Emma Cleanit, Shirley Dusty, Danielle Sweep. Uh, what was the other name that I just saw? Uh, Tanya Tidy Up and Edith Tidier. That's funny. I like those names. That's pretty funny. Alright, so they're going. So we got them now. Uh, we can actually click on guests and stuff and follow them around. Let's see here. I want to follow one of my cleaners here if we can. Can't seem to quite click on them. There we go. Uh, Shirley Dusty. We got litter collected so we can really just follow them around. Um, and uh, stuff. So last three mes me messages. So they're uh, basically trashing the guests for not using the trash can. So they actually have thoughts and stuff. You can come through and you can tell them what to do. So uh, a lot like Roller Coaster Tycoon, for those of you who uh, might know what that game entails. Uh, you can do uh, set up so they only clean litter, or they only clean the restrooms, or they only empty empty the trash cans. Saved another eel there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's see here why we have all that working on. You see, we have a lot of litter in the park, so all of the cleaners, they're going to be working on that. So for right this second, let's build ourselves a attraction with some animals. And we have uh, the different price and stuff. You can also see the intensity rating there. So like um, how, how exciting those are going to be for the fans and stuff. So right there you have Shock Encounter, very beautiful looking. Uh, you have the old Key West. Let's take a look at this. So this is the old Key West Stadium. It looks really, really cool. Uh, definitely a lot of work went into the modeling of that. We also have the old Clyde and Seymour uh, Pirate Show. So it has the ship and everything. So a lot of these are modeled after uh, Seaboard Orlando. And then of course we have Shamu Stadium right there. So pretty, pretty cool. So let's go and get ourselves, we have some sea turtles, we got some dolphins, let's see, we got the Rocky Point Preserve, we got the Pacific Point Preserve, uh, we're going to go with dolphins right here, because we don't really need to uh, expand our park a whole lot, since uh, this is just a little bit of a, uh, <clears throat> oh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, a uh, scenario objective. Uh, so we have our prices, we have our uh, food supply, when do we have the uh, vet and also the uh, animal specialist come back and resupply the food and everything, so we have that all, all going on. So we have two dolphins in here, uh, we can look and see he's young, he's moving around, uh, happy, playing, sleeping, etc. And then food and habitat opinions, so we can watch all of that. Uh, so now that we have animals, we're going to go ahead, oh, get a new uh, attraction update so we can do uh, get our vet and our animal specialists so now we have them and we can actually go through and call them to the attraction and they're going to end up showing up and uh, working on it so let's see if they end up coming here as our cleaners continue to try and wage war on all the trash that people have laid down so here we go, we got our Edward Groomer. He is uh, heading on his way and he is an animal specialist. And we also have our uh, Dr. Fishbender, who's uh, our vet. So he's going to go and do like shots, uh, be able to take care of the animals, check on them, see how they're doing, check their weight, all that stuff. So we got lots of people lined up for the dolphins. Good night, but it's the first attraction here that we built that has animals, so that honestly it makes sense. 
Uh, so let's see here. So where we at on the trash? We got lots of trash going on, and we got a bunch of people. So we are going to call in all the cleaners that we can. We're going on a major hiring spree until we can't hire anymore. There it is. We can't hire any more cleaners. So now all the cleaners heading out, and they will do the cleaning that they need to do because. Unfortunately, our guests are very, very nasty. Uh, so one way that I found that I still remember of how to fix this uh, very problematic park is you come through and you got these uh, smoothie carts and whatnot. Well, these people just always, they get the stuff and then they just throw it on the ground. So guess what? To beat this objective, it's really easy. You come through and you just delete all of these booths and stuff because honestly you do want to kind of come through when you're gonna put these down you want to put them through in an area where you have lots of trash cans lots of sitting areas so you kind of have to do do think out when you actually place these down in park and so you can come through we can delete a good portion of these and that's going to help reduce how much trash we have in the area and you can see now that we have it uh, ooh, we got a California sea lion has been rescued sweet uh, we got uh, the trash slowly starting to come down. You can see a lot of people want to be able to come in and see the dolphins so we can actually raise the price there because uh, they are so such a commodity. We can continue to make money. Uh, coming over here, this is the Haunted Lighthouse and we deleted the uh, our roller coaster there. That's not what we wanted to do. That's one thing. you got to make sure that you're hitting the right thing. But uh, we do have a Haunted Lighthouse 4D experience here. And so you can actually see that we can change when everything gets started by how many guests are in it. So we can actually move that up to 40. Uh, we'll come over to Journey Atlantis. We can actually move that up to uh, 5, 6 people. That's the maximum that are allowed in. So that kind of helps with... Uh, how many people are getting into these rides so that kind of helps with how many people are waiting in line so all that is very very helpful in the long run making sure that those are all maxed out so that you have as many people inside of these things as possible and you can see the trash is still really really high so we're gonna go ahead and see that's the nacho cut we'll go ahead and delete that we got the soda cut and the smoothie cut and what is this, this is the snack cut uh, we will leave the snack cart and whatnot still available. And we're going to see if our cleaners can finally catch up with all of this uh, garbage that has just piled up. And we can rebuild our, our, our little roller coaster here. There we go. Brand new roller coaster, everybody. Come and try it out. That is the thing, is that in this. Uh, let's see if we can get that maximized out. There we go. Uh, people do see these roller coasters and they're like, ooh, hey, look, brand new roller coaster when you put it down for the first time uh, it's the same thing for the restaurants as well uh, so yeah it just once you put something back down in the park it's like ooh, look brand brand new something so it just uh, that's how you kind of get people to come back to a different track attraction or if you're trying to build up another area of the park you just put up down a bunch of different things uh, in that same area and uh, the people start to really show up at those places you can also lower the prices as well and that slowly starts to help us uh, also. So let me take a look here. So uh, as we're still waiting for our trash to get cleaned up, they're still working on that, still fighting that battle. Uh, we can go to the prices at the restaurants. We got several pieces of uh, info here. We have the main entree, the fatatas. Uh, so that's about 12 bucks currently. You can see your profit margin. You also have the sodas. You can see where prices there, and then also the. Uh, amount that we're making so we can take that down to three bucks uh, admission we can actually lower that to about uh, a buck and that's uh, and we can just say that that's like tax or something like that I never really understood why you charge admission to a restaurant I'm not sure what the logic on that was but yeah you can do that too so we got park maps for like an atrocious amount of money so we're gonna take that down to like there you go. You have to pay six bucks for your digital, actually in your hand, paper map. Which, I mean, basically, I mean, hey, it is a souvenir item at this point. So I guess we should be charging for paper maps at this point. So it does kind of make sense. Don't want that, but that does make sense. So we can lower our prices here for like the sodas and whatnot. And uh, also our admission. Got a Flamingo rescued. Very, very cool. So we got all that going on, they're slowly getting the trash taken care of, slowly getting there. 
Almost got it cleaned up. See when they do it here. You can watch it right up here. They almost have it. Slow to get it cleaned up. There we go. So we have one. So we can exit to the menu or we can also just continue playing. We're going to continue playing for right now. But yeah, uh, a lot you can do in this game. And it ends up being a lot of fun. So we can come to the bathroom here. We also got the admission for those. So I usually like to take those down to just a, a buck. So when you're making about 90 cents. But still. Uh, don't want to charge people too much for having to go to the bathroom. Still want to make a profit. But you know. It, it's nice not to have to make them pay that much. But yeah. So I enjoyed this game. This was a very fun game. Playing. And uh, I had a lot of crazy stuff that I ended up doing with it that at some point we'll have to get into with a video. But that's just the basic rundown on SeaWorld Adventure Park Tycoon. Uh, honestly, what I think is one of the best games out there. It's very, very detailed, especially when it came to the uh, financial side of things. And so, made it a lot of fun. So now we got guests complaining about the price that we have on there, so we can lower that, and that should help out. But yeah, they're getting annoyed with the... Uh, weight line as well so we can't do a whole lot about that other than build more attractions with more animals and whatnot and that will uh, cause everybody to be a little bit more happier now other than unlike uh, roller coaster tycoon what you don't have is you don't have like advertisement campaigns you don't have um, there's a bunch of different things that you don't have but this game really does have its own unique take on stuff which is certainly fun and I definitely enjoy it uh, but yeah, there's a ton of space out here that you can use to build out your park. And it can become quite fun and uh, very, very interesting at the same time what all you can do. So anyways, that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick little view of SeaWorld Tycoon. And we will see you guys here next time when hopefully we're going to go crazy and build out SeaWorld Orlando. Yes, we're going to try and actually use all of the stuff that we have in the game to actually build out the current SeaWorld Orlando. I think it could be a lot of fun. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. See you guys here next time. Bye bye.